guys today with me i have jeff tanstrap we will be talking about many things just as a high level let me introduce the topics we will be talking about igp bgp we will be talking about segment routing mpls pce about routing in fed trees rifts there are many questions so i collected some questions from the network engineering group which i have we will be going through the questions try to answer each one of them as the time permits you may not know some of you may not know jeff can you introduce jeff so for the especially youtube audience later on they can follow you or also how they can reach out to you Hey guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for spending your time with me. Jeff, been in networking for almost 30 years. Worked for very large service providers, built a lot of BGP stuff. Been on vendor side for almost 10 years, Redback Networks, Ericsson. Probably built the best router ever. 7750? What was that? No, no, it was Redback, Smartage. Okay. But you have to be old enough to remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, uh, you are doing a lot of things in IETF, especially. Can you just talk about them? Yeah, I find ETF very important part of my life. I find it important to have things standardized so everybody can use them. Very cautious about being fair, and you know, it's, it's part of my life, as well as just dealing with ETF people who I've been seeing every year, three times, probably for the last 15 years. So it's really family. Actually, so specifically to. I, I have a question there. there. Sorry, sorry for interruption, but I have a question. Generally, I wonder, most of those ITF attendees, regular ones especially, is the company sponsoring or they pay from their pocket? How is it? In most cases, it's company sponsored. It's quite ex I mean, ITF itself is not expensive. It's $700 usually. The travel, the time, hotels, food and everything. I mean, significant amount of money. Yes, there right. are a few people who have retired and pay for themselves, but it's very uncommon. Usually it's company sponsored. Okay. Which brings another point. You need to be able to withstand your company pressure to sell their stuff in ATF, right? So, it, I mean, if you just go, obviously, you, you do what your company told you. If you share working group, if you are in ISG, so I see Alvaro here. It's not always easy, and you need to be able to be fair to other ideas and be open to say this idea is better actually than idea that my company is proposed. Not always easy. Cool. Are you ready to start? Yeah. So specifically to ATF, I'm the chair of routing working group. We start most of the discussions about routing. Then eventually we ship them to another working group where we work on fast convergence, where we work on a lot of YAMP models, where we work on new architectures. So all the data center work you see came out of Rocky working group. We decided to have new working groups to work specifically on Rift. LSVR? Are you talking about? And LSVR. Yes. So before actually we've published draft called Routing in DC Requirement, it was just zero zero. And it expired, but it really led to organization of these new working groups and it's still available on Lobby, so you can go and see actually the, the requirement we put together. I remember you. I'll provide you a link afterwards. Yeah, actually, I have that. In fact, in one of my trainings, share those requirements because you made them public, I think, video maybe ITF YouTube channel. I saw that yeah. like there was lots of requirements for from the fabric point of view as well as the routing protocol point of view, like fabric should support 50,000 50, nodes, uh, less than 250 millisecond convergence, etc. or fan out ratios, lots of requirements was there especially. And when we check almost no current routing protocol as well as even Rift and many other routing protocols are not satisfying all the requirements it seems. This, this would be another great talk. We did just RFC 7 938 talk real life discussion but this would be another great talk actually now i want to start the questions we can start discussing the first one igp scalability why igp protocols cannot handle millions of prefixes like bgp does is it due to pet computation algorithm which limits the scalability or something else so you know that BGP default free zone now around 800,000 going to million disaggregation and so many things happening and BGP can scale even internally in the networks people are sending couple millions of prefixes to the PEs etc why not why not IGP for this purpose is it for the algorithm like SPF is limiting or what's happening just resource issue so let's start high level IGPs are there to define nodes and links of the nodes. There's actually much more stuff that you could use or abuse your IGPs for. BGP on the other side is meant for let you know how to get to particular ISN. 
So the level of abstraction is completely different. And this gives you ability to scale much higher because for all you need to know is you need to have mapping IP prefix to ISN and the path together. Mm -hmm. And then as you go, as you traverse towards your destination, you look up your database, you go towards another IS that is resolved through next hop in the RAP. BGP is nothing else than largely distributed database and data structure when you have mapping between prefixes to ISN and recursive appreciability through next hops. Right. Mm -hmm. If you look at IGP on another side, you need to describe a node. You need to describe every link on the node. You need to describe in a lot of cases what the links are capable of. But we are more and more using IGPs to transport data. That's really metadata, right? You could use IGPs to transport segment routing related stuff with regards to how large my MP elastic can be. There's a lot of uh, OM information, so latency, delays, all the stuff, it's all fed into IGPs. So going, looking closer into IGPs, so every device needs to be able to tell other devices about its links. And this really limits the amount of information it can transport because obviously LSPs and LSA are of particular size and can include a particular number of links. So, so we are talking... Really we are talking about topology information here, that every router needs to know each and every other device, their connection and the metric between them. But in the BGP case, of course, we don't need to know entire topology of the internet. We are, we are talking you really about. need to know how to reach your next hub. Yeah, this, this is putting significant limits. Okay, what if I would increase, let's say today my network IGP-wise handle 10,000 prefixes. And if I would increase my resources, CPU memory on the devices 100 times, can IGP start handling 100 times of those prefixes? So 10,000 prefixes, can, can it handle million prefix then? So let's go back. There are inherent limits to amount of information you can propagate as per node basis. Uh -huh. Fundamental property of link state protocols is that LSB on every device in the same area or level must be the same. Yeah. So there's also propagation of the information thing. Mm -hmm. And just SPF is absolutely not a gating factor anymore. So last time we, I did proper testing for ISIS probably five, six years ago, uh, we ran SPF million nodes graph for below two milliseconds. SPF run time. Yeah, so as you see, you are not gated by the Number of SPF nodes. itself. I mean, on the especially on good implementation where you do a lot of caching, multi-threaded, you could do it below one millisecond. So computation itself is not a gating factor. What's a gating factor really is amount of updates and frequency of updates. If you multiply them, you get unstable networks that never converges. And that's really a problem in very large data centers. That's why IGPs traditionally perform really badly because of densely connected graph. So you get an update from everybody. You need to process this update, you need to schedule them, you need to send and generate new updates because as you remember, everybody has to know about any change. So this is where limitations are coming from. Did you... Physical limitation based on particular size of particular attributes. So number of links you can include, number of not fragmentation, but number of fragments you can include in LSP. So all those imposed limitations that hit you about 30 to 50,000 nodes. But in general, it's really the propagation, frequency, and size, right? So Again, going back to kind of mm -hmm. higher level, IGPs aren't meant to be police. They are meant to distribute information. If you look at BGP, BGP is really a policy protocol. So at any point in the network, you could change your policy with regards to distribution. It's native to BGP. In IGPs, if you don't look at hacks, implement by vendors some point time, the only place where you can employ any policy is really boundaries. It's your ABR or ASBR. If you're on a single area level, practically you shouldn't be able to do anything because LSDB must be the same. There's disconnect between LSDB on one side and how you do forwarding, so you read, eventually you'll create routing. So, scalability comes with the hierarchy, and hierarchy is either through multi-array OSPF, multi-level ISAS, and all the policy is done at the either L1, L2 routers or ABR, ASBR. So, basically, what you just said is important for this guy's question. You say SPF, so computation 
the algorithm which finds the shortest path is not a limitation, but the uh, rate of change in the control plane is a limitation. Actually, this one also was described in the book which you wrote with Russ. So control plane complexity. That's okay. I think the understandable. We provided answer for this question. 